Well, Peter, Peter Wife with uh, FAA here can talk to us about the, uh, the PAFI and the program, what's going on. We've got a number of questions here. Uh, the PAFI R&D test program was originally scheduled to be completed by the end of 18, and now it's been pushed out to the end of uh, 19. So tell me a little bit why and what's going on with the PAFI initiative today. So the PAFI was started as uh, an effort to come up with a replacement unleaded avgas, and it really takes a, a collaborative effort between government and the FAA and the industry to, uh, to make that happen. So uh, the industry groups came to the FAA and asked the FAA to take a leadership role in this effort, and so we have, and that's how PAFI was formed. Uh, so uh, originally, uh, PAFI was scheduled to complete in December 2018. Um, through the test program, we have run into some issues with the, fuel, uh, with the fuels, and we've taken a little break to let the fuel producers come up and develop mitigations uh, for the issues that they've each encountered with their, with their fuels. Um, we've given both offers time to develop those mitigation, mitigating actions, and so that's what led to the delay and pushed us out uh, to December, uh, uh, more into 2019. Uh, Shell is continuing to work actively on developing those mitigations, and uh, we expect to get back on test with them shortly. So there's been some real technical challenges here in terms of getting the replacement for low lead I want to low lead. What are some of the lessons that you have, have learned across this, uh, this journey from some technology or from chemistry that were surprising? Well, um, very, very challenging issue. You know, taking the lead out of uh, avgas, you know, lead can be added in small amounts, and most of the octane enhancers require uh, more significant amounts. So, um, when, it, when these uh, additional octane enhancers, alternative octane enhancers are added in larger amounts, it's hard to maintain the uh, fuel fit for, fit for performance properties that, uh, and keep them similar to D910 with the changes that these additional um, octane enhancers bring along. So that, that's been a real challenge. Uh, materials compatibility issues, operability issues uh, have, have been encountered and we've been been working hard to uh, work with the fuel producers to come up with uh, you know, mitigations to reduce those impacts. So assuming that uh, one of these providers is successful in the continuing testing that you're doing this year and, and through, the, uh, through 2019, what's the likely path after 2019 if assuming that one of these does uh, continue to be successful? So when the program finishes up, we'll have a, a quite a bit of test data available, and uh, test data and reports summarizing uh, the, the testing work we've done. And those reports uh, can be used by the fuel producer to go get a production specification from ASTM that will let them produce and distribute their fuel in the uh, uh, production and distribution infrastructure easily. Uh, the FAA will take that data and uh, perform the fleet-wide, hopefully fleet-wide authorization to approve engines and aircraft operate on those fuels, and uh, then it will be up to the uh, you know the market to uh, transition and get those fuels uh, in, into use. It'll take probably a regulatory driver uh, to make that happen. So we're working with EPA on their endangerment finding uh, to sort of force the transition. So you believe that the endangerment finding, which uh, the EPA has been working on in terms of the lead and removing the lead from the fuels. Uh, is it going to impact the timeline in this transition? Because we still want to make sure it's going to be drop in and, and compatible with the fleet, but we also have to work with whatever uh, the agency says, I believe, huh? Yeah, so uh, we've been working closely with EPA to coordinate timing on you know, their, their regulatory action and our you know, ultimate availability of, of an unleaded fuel. Um, but, it, but we do believe that uh, the transition to an unleaded avgas will take a regulatory force forcing function, if you will, and I think that sort of a transition um, will be the most orderly, coordinated, and probably safe as well. Um, if it's if it's done nationally on a uh, you know broad coordinated level, I think that will lead to a much safer transition than if it's done more sporadically due to uh, local or state uh, regulatory activity or environmental uh, response activity. Yeah, we'd certainly like to see it. With the fuels ready, and as pointed out, was a drop-in and competitive. All the rules that were first established the PAFI are still important today, correct? Correct. Yeah. So we have heard that there's other fuels operating uh, with the intent outside of PAFI in the program and potentially pursuing SDCs. 
What can you tell us about that and what's their likelihood or what does it mean for the PAPI program? So development, apparently development of fuel, uh, unleaded fuel technology has been continuing outside of PAPI while we're uh, working with the fuels within PAPI. Folks are still, uh, you know, working hard to come up with alternatives outside. And so PAPI is aware of that activity and we're interested in uh, seeing what else is coming down the pike. So while we're on this, um, break and development, working with the fuel offers within PAFI develop mitigating actions. We're also inviting uh, fuel offers outside of PAFI that are working on unleaded formulations to bring their data forward and we can evaluate uh, what they put together and if it looks like a viable alternative, we'd like to bring it in and do some preliminary testing um, and, and see, uh, you know, so we have visibility into all the unleaded uh, fuel solutions out there. So there could potentially be, potentially, uh, fuels outside of PAFI that will get an STC on either a fleet-wide basis or whatever they're trying to approach with you guys? That's true. So there are, um, there's the tool fuel producers within PAFI we're working with and there are folks um, outside of PAFI that we've been working with on uh, STC type programs. Uh, we will work with all fuel producers to uh, try and evaluate all unleaded alternatives to make sure that you know the best, all fuels are brought forward and get, have a chance to uh, uh, you know, get get certified or authorized for use and uh, compete in the marketplace to see which one um, ultimately will be the fuel the industry transitions to. Well, Peter, thank you for your work. I know the aviators at uh, AOPI uh, are counting on getting the, a good fuel that uh, is better for the environment long term, but also has to support really old airplanes, new airplanes, high performance airplanes. So uh, there's a lot of uh, anticipation about how this is all going to go and making sure that that it ultimately is competitive. So. Thanks for your work on this, and uh, we look forward to a, a good outcome, whatever length of time it takes. Well, a lot of folks are working hard to make it happen. Thanks, Peter. Nice talking with you, Mark.